So now in this video, we're going to look at this circuit. I'll take it apart and uh, build it up step by step to explain it. And uh, one of the components is not even part of this, but it gives us a virtual ground. So it's not part of the schematic other than it gives us a virtual ground. We're going to make a non-inverting comparator. This time though, we're going to use a split power supply. So now we have, as I said before, a comparator. When I put a lower voltage than halfway with this trim pot, the green LED is lit up. When I go higher, the red LED lights up and uh, they are not very bright. I'll lower the uh, light. That's because we're using a fairly high value uh, resistor right there for the voltage that we have right now. So you see nine volts right there and I'm actually going to uh, step up this voltage uh, really rapidly. We're gonna go by tens. So there's 19 and there's 29 and uh, 30. That's the most that this can output. And that's what I wired this up for. So there's 30 volts there. But the thing is, you can see the LEDs are parallel. We got the resistor. And so the way that the other LED lights up, the green LED, is that current goes in the opposite direction. We're changing the direction of the output of the op amp right there. And so I just showed you we're using a DC supply, which uh, by itself makes it a bit hard for uh, current to uh, change direction. It's not impossible like capacitors. They let current go one way and then the other in parts of a circuit. But uh, we took the 30 volts now to the supply. I can just go to any point, positive rail, negative rail. So it's slightly uh, lower there. We have a little bit of losses. And using this integrated circuit right here, this now becomes our ground right there. So that's our virtual ground. That's why the load goes there. And if I go to the negative rail, you see we have negative basically 15 volts. If I go to the positive rail, we have a positive 15 volts. So we split the power supply using this uh, little integrated circuit here. So now, when you're looking for a 2426, I think it's best to search for TLE 2426, and uh, this is not showing up terribly well. There we go, that's pretty good. But you don't see TLE on there, you do see the 2426. So it's a bit confusing, uh, but when I bought these, I searched for TLE 2426 and found it just fine. That's how they listed it. It's uh, kind of annoying, but uh, it is what it is. So here is the pin layout. We're looking at the flat side. It looks like a TO92 package, but it may be slightly different. I'm not sure. And uh, in any case, left pin is out. And so that's our virtual ground once we wire this up. Pin two is common, so we put that to the negative rail. And then pin three, we put to the positive rail. So I usually work my way more positive up, two more negative down. So I'm gonna put pin three to the top there, and that's gonna go to the positive rail. The uh, power supply is off right now. And uh, the uh, middle pin, the uh, common, is to the negative rail. And now we have our virtual ground right there. And now we have the multimeter again. I'll set it to voltage. This is auto ranging. We don't have to worry about anything. I'll leave this at 30 volts and uh, stop where it will change it. Now the output is on and we can measure again that we have 30 volts at the rail with this uh, rail splitter right there. It's a tad below, but in uh, any case, again, in relationship to this point, negative 15, positive 15. What we're really doing is taking the 30 volts and in relationship to the negative rail, we have 15 volts right there, which is halfway to the, okay, we're negative to negative, so it's halfway, I should go to a positive jumper there, to 30 volts right there. And so that becomes our virtual ground halfway point for the 741 op amp. That's really about what we need because it doesn't output to the rails. And so now let's get to the actual circuitry. I'm going to turn the uh, power supply off. It's usually better to wire things up with the power supply off, even though sometimes you come across interesting things when you're wiring it up while it's going on, but hopefully not interesting that you destroyed a component. But in any case, here is the uh, UA741 op amp that I'm using, and uh, the writing is not very easy to see trying to film on camera. So. Uh, I'm not going to show that. But in any case, we have 
to uh, power the op amp so that's pin 7 up there to the positive rail and then pin 4 down here to the negative rail as you can see there since we split the power supply we have VCC plus and VCC minus that's pretty common also we could split this with a couple like batteries and so we'd be to the positive terminal of one battery and then to the negative terminal of the other battery right there and then this point would go to where those two batteries connect right in the middle now we are going to take the green LED as far as our virtual ground is concerned and put it to the, uh, vir the uh, long lead, the anode I mean, to our uh, virtual ground right there and the uh, red LED we're going to do the opposite so when it comes to the virtual ground we're going to put the short lead, the cathode, to our virtual ground right there so we have the uh, shorter lead there I might as well zoom in for now and uh, so short lead for the red one long lead for the green one we're gonna take a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor because as we just saw I'm using 30 volts but the uh, resistor will either see 15 volts minus the diode drop plus the output doesn't go to the rail but in any case the output is pin 6 so there's the output on the schematic of a 741 and so that's uh, pin 6 right there so I'll just put the resistor to the output and then to the LEDs and so even while we haven't finished uh, wiring this up if we output now it should either be probably high or low or maybe bouncing back and forth okay it is high right now and uh, so in any case we're, we're not done wiring that wasn't what it was intended to do but it's either outputting high or low or alternating even if you apply power before you're done wiring and now we'll get to the uh, part of the circuitry that determines whether the output is high or low. So we have the inverting input, pin number two right there. That is just a fixed voltage divider that we're going to set halfway. So it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be pretty much our virtual ground when we have uh, 30 volts. It's going to be about halfway 15. So that'll give us 15 plus and 15 minus in relationship to that point. So it's pretty straightforward. I'm going to take 100 kilo ohm resistors. They can be high value because it really doesn't let any current. I mean, a tiny bit trickles through. So if you want to get real technical, a little current trickles through, but practically no current does. It really just looks at the voltage that we're putting to the uh, inverting input right here. And so that's the voltage we set. The one we control is going to the non-inverting input which is pin number three and I have a trim pot a 10 kilo ohm trim pot so that I can adjust it manually but uh, it's uh, pretty much the same we're just putting it to the pin the pins gonna look at the voltage and using 30 volts at the rail that's gonna go across the trim pot so it's really important that we use a 10 kilo ohm uh, trim pot and that may even be a bit low, to be honest. I didn't do the math, but uh, I think we'll still be uh, safe. But in any case, we're going to put the jumper to the middle pin of the trim pot. We got the uh, positive on that side, negative over there. There's a wiper that goes across. This connects to it. Again, current doesn't go into the input, so all the power supply current, other than a little bit of leakage, still has to go through that 10,000 ohms of resistance. And uh, so 100 kilo ohm trim pot uh, may be better and so I'll write a hundred kilo ohm on there if this is actually too low but I think we're still safe I'll do the math but in case we're done wiring this up that is it let's uh, see if it is working properly there you can see we are less than halfway we're closer to the negative rail than the positive rail now we'll get halfway to the positive rail and we pass that halfway point we're more positive and so the output is positive we know that because that's how we wired the LEDs. When the output is more positive than now our zero volt reference point, the red LED lights up. If it's more negative, then the green LED lights up. It tells us. And current, as far as the uh, resistor here is concerned, and all the wiring, that little jumper or whatnot, and the uh, virtual ground that we set there, I think it's the output. Uh, currents going one way or the other so right now the virtual ground is actually uh, the source of the current as you can see there if we turn the red LED on 
Now our virtual ground is sinking current into it. We think of current going more positive to negative. So now I did the math, the 10,000 uh, ohm trim pot is perfectly fine. That's enough, that keeps us well below. This is probably a quarter watt component, I don't know for sure, but uh, it, it probably is. So, in any case, now we're gonna look at the output of the op amp. So the output does not go from rail to rail. So as we saw before, this has a 15 volt different from each rail. One positive, the red one, and one negative, the uh, blue one. If we go to the output, right now the output's high, so we're gonna see a positive voltage probably about 13 volts, approximately, in that range, in K14. So, I think that's probably gonna do a little better positive than negative, but uh, maybe not. So, that's about a volt away from the positive rail. I'm gonna turn the trim pot so that now the output is more negative than our virtual ground. I bet this one is closer to 13, but again, I could be wrong. I didn't take these measurements earlier. So there you can see, negative 13 right there. So it goes a little closer to the positive rail than the negative rail. That's something to keep in mind. And uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter for the circuitry. In fact, the uh, green LED, as you can see, is just naturally brighter. And so we take that 13 volts, subtract about three volts from the LED. So it's really bright, it's kind of hurting uh, my eye. So this side's more positive. That side's more negative. It's probably blocking, okay, about 2.7 volts right there. And so the rest of the voltage will go across the resistor to set the uh, current. And uh, so there we go. We got about 10 volts across the uh, resistor right there. And now we're gonna look at the red LED. I'll change the output. And so current's going the other way. And the output is more positive, so we'll go up here and uh, connect to any point that connects to the anode of the red LED. There you can see it's black in about two volts. So it's uh, not quite a volt less, but it's a volt less. And so there's more voltage across the resistor than there was with the green LED. So some more current is flowing through, but the green LEDs are just naturally brighter. So in any case, there's a few more things you can uh, measure and whatnot with the circuit but otherwise it's uh, pretty straightforward we just made a comparator we set the voltage with a uh, fixed voltage divider to half of the power supply voltage and uh, so we've been using 10 I mean 30 because normally I see when it comes to the 741 op amp a positive negative a split supply of 15 volts and uh, this is a very well-known uh, component. When you do a Google search, I bet you're gonna find one where it's being powered by five, uh, 15 volts, I mean positive and negative, for a total of 30 volts. But, of course, you don't have to uh, power it that way. And I found that it works okay down to nine volts of the total supply, where you have uh, 4.5 positive and 4 point negative. And uh, the LEDs even have a nicer, uh, balance of uh, light down at this lower voltage so that's not too bad and also uh, 9 volt batteries aren't too hard but uh, you're gonna see here that uh, as I work the uh, voltage down so it's kind of like a draining battery even a draining 9 volt battery looks like it may do okay so but once it gets to 8 volts it's pretty much done for right there let's turn the trim pot more positive the red LED is doing a little bit better. It doesn't block as much voltage as we saw before. Plus, it outputs uh, more positive, better than more negative, as we saw before. So we can keep going down for the red one, but we turn the green one. Now we gotta work our way up quite a bit. So, in any case, that was just some extra stuff. I'll pop up some uh, other videos and my subscription button on the screen right now, so click them if uh, any of those look interesting. But uh, Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.